Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at enclosures. You guys have been asking me about this a lot, so let's take a listen. What is an enclosure? An enclosure is a phrase or a little melodic line usually consisting of at least three notes that's designed to have a target note. So take a look here. I'm gonna do this in C. So we see the D and the B surround the target note C. This is diatonic. You can see this is diatonic to the C major scale. We can also do chromatic enclosures. It creates a little more tension and a little more interest. Enclosures are not limited to only three notes surrounding a target note. Usually with enclosures, we have a phrase that avoids the target note, or we have enclosures that actually include the target note, but it's de-emphasized until we actually hit the target. Listen to the different ways I use enclosures to target this note, C. In my opinion, the two best ways to approach enclosures are to think about the chord that the phrase outlines and the articulation that we use to either de-emphasize or to emphasize the target note. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this kind of stuff and you want to support the channel, you can buy me a piece of cake. I'll put a link in the description. And of course, I have my Altissimo book for alto saxophone and tenor saxophone available as a digital purchase. There's also a link there. Also, I have a link for a lot of products that you see in this video, including this shirt, my own Cervalo sax shirts, mugs, etc. Let's listen to this phrase to hear how I'm emphasizing certain notes with my articulation. I have a video that's up and I have a video that I'm working on talking about jazz articulation with saxophone. One of the most common questions that I get about this is, well, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, Stan Getz, Lee Connitz, these people did not articulate the same way, but yet it still sounds jazzy. But what is the overarching idea that makes saxophone articulation sound jazzy. So let me let me sidetrack a little bit here, but articulation really doesn't have anything to do with what you're doing with your tongue. Articulation has to do with how you are emphasizing some notes more than others. Usually the faster a song goes, the less tongue articulation that we add, and also the less bounce is in the swing. If we are thinking about it from a harmonic standpoint, it's very important to understand it from the dominant seven perspective. The dominant seven is where all the magic is really happening. If I were to equate this to a magician, the dominant seven chord is really, that's where the real illusion takes place. The major chord or the minor chord of resolution, that is the actual performance of the magic trick. That's revealing that the person's invisible. This only takes a split second. The real art is in what's done in preparation for pulling off the illusion. That's why something like this. That's the setup. That's the misdirection. The resolution. The actual performing of the trick. It can be very helpful to understand how these things work. So let's take a look at it from a dominant seven point of view. What we want to do is outline the structure of the dominant seven chord when we are thinking about using these enclosures. <laughs>
Okay. So you can very easily hear how I'm approaching the important notes that I want to really emphasize. Let's think about it in terms of human speech. If you ask me a very simple question. Hey, did you go to the store? It's a yes or no question. But I might think a little more creatively and say to myself, why is this person asking me this? Does this person actually want to go to the store? Was I expected to buy something for this person? So instead of just giving a yes or no answer, I might give an answer that's a little more creative or not even answer the question at all. Like, did you go to the store? I'm sorry, did you want to go with me? I would have liked to have gone. Well, I haven't gone yet, so let's go. I could have just said, no, I didn't. <laughs> So when we're playing music, if we want to actually make an interesting conversation, we need to find ways of not just outlining the chords. We need to find a way of not just playing arpeggios for every chord. Okay, so from an enclosure point of view, I can just think. I'm working on a new video about things that I practice. I did one a few years ago when I was on the ship, but obviously I don't practice the same things now that I did then. I generally practice what it is that I'm going to do for the gig. I haven't really gigged in a while, so I'm working on a lot of maintenance type of stuff. So thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I got for you. See ya!